Okay. I always, I make myself a big note because I have forgotten that one time. And thankfully, <laughs> Bruce was there to back me up. I always appreciate him. Our speaker this evening is John Adams, and he is going to be sharing information regarding his educational associate degree uh, research and application. Um, he began his special professional photography career in 2005 in Vermont. At the start of his photography career, he took as many mm -hmm. classes and workshops as possible. It was within these classes that he realized his passion is not only photography, but also education. Uh, he holds a master's degree in education and has earned various professional photography degrees uh, from PPA, such as a uh, master of photography, photographic craftsman, and he's a CPP. Uh, he has been featured in the PPA loan book every year since 2011, was the first person in Vermont to receive the Diamond Photographer of the Year Award, and has been nominated numerous times for Grand Imaging Awards. Uh, he is currently the treasurer and past president of Vermont Professional Photographers Association and is a science teacher at the local high school where he teaches innovation and engineering. So uh, John has said that uh, he was willing to take questions as you go along. So feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question if you want to uh, know something right there in the middle of it. Take it away, John. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And before I start, I didn't realize Wayne Tarr was going to show up to this, which is actually pretty phenomenal because Wayne was actually my mentor when I was younger and he is an educator as well. So he's a he's a past principal at a local um, middle school or elementary school. So Thanks, Wayne, for coming. And thank you, everybody else, for coming. Um, let me share my screen here. Can everybody see this? Everybody see the screen? Should be a notebook? Yes, we can see it. Yes. Okay. Yep. So thanks. So um, I did my, I'll just go through kind of what my um, my paper was on. I did some research. Part of it, too, is like, um, I have a, I, I, you know, I have a portrait studio in town and, and I'm also a teacher. So I get to have, you know, both lenses of, of, you know, the aspects of, you know, intertwining photography and education. And honestly, like, if you think about why you're here tonight, um, it's really, a, you know, you're, you're interested in education as well. So just not photography. So, um, I think that's, you know, one thing that's great about ASP and the, the state um, organizations is that, you know, education usually comes first, which is pretty phenomenal. A um, little bit about me. Uh, so I'm a science teacher. Uh, at a, at, you know, I, I live in Milton, Vermont. Um, so I teach about five minutes down the road. It's It's got pros and cons. I mean, I, first off, my commute is amazing. It's literally a tank of gas, you know, every every um, every month. Um, that being said, I was at school last night till eight o'clock, um, you know, working in the innovation center. Um, I run, I'm the director of the innovation center at Milton. Uh, I'm, you know, we're, we got a grant for about eight hundred thousand uh, dollars this past year, and um, you know, we're in the middle of renovating it. But and you'll see some stuff that we're working on. Um, but the the biggest thing that I learned with this whole process is that um, it's really important to have kids, which is, you know, the thing about our future, you know, get them thinking outside the box. And in that sense, inquiry, in my mind, is the most important experience kids, kids can have. And um, and then, you know, on the other side, um, you know, I've been in business for about 19 years or so. I do a lot of weddings and portraits. And I just found out about a couple of weeks ago that I'm the president elect for Vermont. So be president next year again. So, but it's, it's a phenomenal process. That's for sure. Um, so I want to, what, and I said, I was from Milton, Vermont. So this is our weather for the next, for this weekend. So those of you guys who are in sunny California or Texas, I am super jealous because it is close to be si being single digits, uh, tomorrow night. So bundle up. So anyway, so what I uh, did my research on was the kind of the effects that art, education, photography, and I'm going to use uh, photography, art, and design uh, education because at the end of the day, it's really they're really the same thing uh, when it comes to um, cognitive development. But I looked at what's the effects that if you have kids take these classes versus if you strip art, if you take out photography, if you take out any sort of design, 
classes out of school due to like say budgetary constraints or anything like that what effect does it have um one thing that's i appreciate about my school is that we have a lot of we put a lot of resources in getting kids engaged when it comes to hands-on stuff so you're going to see a lot of examples tonight uh regarding that um so uh just to summarize i think my paper is going to be on the asp website um it's about 14 15 pages and it goes through a lot of the the research that i did um, so I'm just going to kind of give you a summary of what I did this, you know, uh, when I was researching it. So I looked at three areas. Uh, one of them was cognitive development. Uh, so studies have shown that integrating photography, design, art into education can lead to improved academic performance in subjects like mathematics and reading, while also fostering visual literacy and spatial intel intelligence. Furthermore, photography enhances emotional intelligence by requiring photo photographers to interrupt or in interpret and capture raw emotions, highlighting his role in holistic cognitive development and personal growth. So that is one area. I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go, just go through the three areas that I looked at. Um, so the first one is cognitive. The second one was emotional development. Um, so as students engage in a photographic process, they delve into the emotional reservoirs, expressing and understanding their feelings through visuals which contributes to better emotional processes, processing and communication. Additionally, photography exposes students to diverse emotions and cultures, nurturing empathy and breaking down barriers while also providing a therapeutic outlet for emotional release and promoting resilience and community engagement. Um, we see a lot of kids at school, um, you know, kids that don't, kids that need escape, um, you know, just mentally um they get into the arts like i see kids doodle all the time and i encourage doodling um, especially when we're doing notes so i actually create doodle notes and so if we're going through you know some sort of hard topic or whatever i have some cartoons i'll put in i'll i'll draw some doodle areas i'll make you know text kind of bubble look looking and give kids color pencils to write their notes in so you see kids doodle all the time which is really really important uh, for their emotional development um, and then the last piece I looked at was social development. Um, so that's photography education in secondary school serves as a powerful avenue for holistic learning, fostering critical social skills and promoting collaboration, self-expression, and cultural engagement. Through collaborative projects and exhibitions, students develop essential social skills such as communication, cooperation, and networking, while also exploring diverse perspectives and narratives. Additionally, photography education equips students with the tools to navigate digital social landscapes responsibly, ensuring evo they evolve as responsible digital citizens prepared for the complexities of the modern world. Um, so I'm going to, anybody have any questions on those three? It was cognitive, emotional, and social. So just kind of give you a brief, you know, it's just kind of a brief outline. So basically, I'm going to go through the why. Um, about this research and why I wanted to do this. Um, part of my new role is trying to integrate STEAM or STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and math into STEAM, which is adding the arts. Um, so by integrating that art piece, we're able to get kids involved with this that would not necessarily think that they want to become an engineer. Because in, in all honesty, you know, if you have, there's, I see two types of kids. Um, either they're really math and science oriented or they're English, social studies, kind of the arts as well uh, minded. So what I did um, or what I, we are trying to do is integrate that, that art piece into the engineering and mathematics. We're able to have more kids go through um, this program um design program and it's integrating all the things such as you know 3d printing design um photography uh, painting all this stuff um and we're seeing a the, we're, we're tracking kids i'm going to show you some data in a little bit but we're tracking kids who's going through the program and we're seeing a huge amount of resilience from these kids that go through it uh, versus if they don't go through it um so here's an example, uh, and also when it comes to creativity. So NASA, this is one piece of research I looked at. NASA developed this creativity test. Um, 
And what they saw, they, they were supposed to be for astronauts of trying to solve problems under pressure and stuff like that. And how creative can you get? And this test showed that, um, you know, there was this level of genius that you can reach. And the only people that were really reaching that was kindergartners. They saw 98% of all kindergartners were geniuses when it comes to creativity. And as these kids get older, as people get older, they lose that. So what I was, we were trying to do is, can we keep this creativity going? Can we take, take this 12% of kids that are 15, that are in high school, and bring that back up to you know, 60, 70%? Um, and as photographers, um, you know, it's interesting because we photographer as photographers are really creative people for the most part. Um, and some of like, I'm, if I, as I'm looking through print competition, like I'm looking at uh, some of these images, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's genius, right? And and is that really 2% of the population that is able to do this? And I know we're get kind of shielded with the photography field because we're all artists. Um, but in general, um, we're seeing a decrease in the levels of creativity that that um, as people age. So part of this whole research we're seeing, can we increase this amount of creativity for these kids, students? And what happens when we do? Because it turns out that 70, like um, there was an article on LinkedIn, 70% of business leaders say creativity is the most important uh, thing when they're when they're hiring decisions. So what does that mean is that if we're not able to take this this level of creativity, to boost this level, you know, are these students, are these kids going to be able to find jobs uh, at the end? So that's kind of the the realm of where this research went. Um, so we saw when we're doing when we're looking at uh, the kids that take the programs, we saw that uh, kids who take the design classes, the kids that take the art classes. In general, they're better communicators, they're better collaborators, they're great co that collaborators, and they they end up adapting to and respect diverse ways of thinking. Um, and that's kind of the key piece that we saw. Um, so if you take a look at you know five key pieces here, observations and reflections, persistence, risk-taking, multiple solutions, and visioning, this is what we're seeing these kids have or increase when they take a photography class, when they take an art class, when they do a design class. Um, so give you some things that I've done this year with the kids. So it's one thing I wanna emphasize is that every kid, like not every kid in my class is gonna be a photographer. Not every kid is gonna be um, a graphic designer or a painter. So trying to think outside the box because at the end of the day, photography is just creating, it's just designing. So whether you do a 3D sculpture, whether you do, um, you know, a two D, a two D, you know, piece of work. Uh, you, it's important to have that design piece where you get kids thinking. So, I I gave kids a a a, um, a challenge here, and it was, can you create a bridge? Uh, can you can you create a bridge that can hold weight? Uh, so, as we're going here, we ended up um, increasing, kept increasing this weight. This shows it's fifty six pounds on this. The all these kids were able to use is is uh white glue and popsicle sticks that was it um so we went down to the weight room and we tested these kids designs and this bridge actually held up around 350 pounds i should have taken a picture of it as it was breaking but um but it's pretty cool that you know how kids can uh start thinking about that design process um and being able to apply that in real world situations um, we also part of this innovation center that we got that I've been trying to start, we do an embroidery. So can we take graphics that kids create? Can we take photographs? Can we take artwork and can we make it into a wearable, um, merchandise is what they call, they call it merch. So we're trying, what I'm trying to do with these students is just trying to have them express themselves or create different ways of expressing themselves throughout. Um, and not I don't know what kid does not love having their own uh, name brand um, material or name brand uh, clothing, because clothing is really popular. So we do hats, we're doing uh, vests, we're doing shirts. And these kids are getting on the computer, they're drawing, they're painting, we're able to digitize um, what they want. Uh, they create patches and they uh, put them on hats. And it's been pretty, pretty phenomenal. Um, and we're trying to bring even like bringing this stuff into um, outside of classes. This was a um, 
Peyton snack that uh, we put on in the innovation center for kids to come in and parents and everybody and just paint along with us just to have some time to design a design a piece. So that's actually a picture of my daughter. Um, I had her as a guinea pig to see if this program would work. And that was the painting that she did uh, with that. I know it looks few and far where she started there, but I thought it was, she did a good job. Um, we did some um, design work around houses. Uh, so kids drew uh, these houses. You can kind of see on the computer. Um, they were seeing what it would be like to be an architect. Uh, so they drew these houses. They We used a laser cutter. Uh, I have a laser cutter in the center. And they were able to um, extrapolate models um, and such. So they were creating a design. They were implementing it. Um, and they were able to... Um, kind of prototype it so we use car we use cardboard here for prototyping because then what we do after the cardboard after we're done is is some more prototyping going on um i have the kids make it out of wood so this is obviously is not the same one as what this is but this was a finished product i have a hard time getting samples of these things because kids tend to take them home without me knowing because they want to show their parents um but i mean how cool of a thing is that to have a kid design from start to finish um, and then what we're doing, what I'm, we're trying to implement is product photography. And I know this is done on an iPhone, but can a kid design something and then, um, can they photograph it, um, as well? So I have in the next few weeks, I'm going to have some, uh, white paper and some green screen paper, uh, hung from the ceiling in the classroom so they can come down and use it to photograph stuff if needed. Um, this is another example of design. Um, kids wanted to have a better um, nutrition program at school, so they decided to uh, develop a hydroponic system. Um, so they designed this, uh, they drafted it, they drafted a model, and then they applied it. So, and it's still running today. So we provide all the basil and the herbs to the cafeteria at school, which is pretty cool. They had interest in growing other things but kind of wasn't school appropriate so um we have router we have a cnc router so kids are developing sculptures they're um, able to create a sculpture out of clay scan it and then uh route it out or you know in this situation it looks like it was a, it was a puzzle that these kids made so we're able to um have kids design in multiple multiple mediums and then same with these things. We just got these in. I got a $15,000 grant to buy these and kids are designing metal parts. So kind of what um, they're doing here is I gave them a problem. My camera kept falling off the tripod. So they are developing a um, a better bracketing system, bracket system for my camera. So taking a problem and then they're applying what they learned from that. Um, we did, we're in the middle of doing cyanotyping. Um, and what we did is we took a, we built a, a pinhole camera out of, uh, out of the innovation center. So, so, you know, this is laser cut, cut this wood. We developed a pinhole camera and then we're exposed that we had, we created a dra a mock-up, uh, dark room. And then we're using that to do some cyanotyping. Uh, and I'm working with the, the art teacher to do that. So I'm working with the art teacher and also the chemistry teacher. Um, so in that, in that sense, we're able to, you know, inter integrate, you know, STEM, STEAM, you know, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, uh, and creating a, a usable product. Um, so what that does is it takes this observation and reflection. It takes persistence, risk taking, multiple solutions, and visioning, and it adds in collaboration because that's one thing that kids have a hard time with right now is being able to collaborate effectively. So. Um, so in, in that sense, um, you know, they're able to work and learn how to work together. Um, and where does this matter for us? Um, you know, this is a, the University of Vermont is our local, um, is our local university. And we, they have this, what you call the Vermont Pitch Challenge. So kids, what this is about is being able to innovate. So kids can present kind of like a shark tank their ideas, they, the, what they have built. And the winner of this actually gets a full four-year scholarship to the University of Vermont, which is valued around $100,000. So um, there is there is some meat in the game when it comes to having these kids um, learn how to design, innovate, and such. 
Um, so we have some limitations. One thing about my community is really good at providing funding. Um, but like any other school district, you know, things always get cut. So we have escaped the cutting piece when it comes to cutting out art education, because we have really valued the fact that kids who take art, who take design, who take photography classes will do better in reading and writing. Um, but we do have some, you know, obviously there's some limitations. It, it does cost a lot of money to run this. Um, my budget's around $30,000 a year uh, just for equipment and materials to run it. Um, but one thing that we have done is uh, with this, we do an art night. So we invite, you know, parents, uh, community members. Uh, we have authors that come in and speak. And uh, we have basically a night of student work being displayed all across uh, the school. So it's it's a pretty cool, um, it's a pretty good, cool experience to see it. Um, so it's, we try to intertwine all the different type of work that the kids do um, and such. And one thing, um, you know, I, I'm glad I actually have Jamie here, who's our current president um, of the organization in, in Wayne. And one thing that we've supported in Vermont is, is, providing free memberships to our organization. So the Vermont Professional Photographer Association and majorly discounted uh, college, you know, college memberships. And what we do here is we're trying to get kids involved in our organization because we know they're the future. And we know that um, without them, we're gonna just be stuck on the board for 25 years. So what we're trying to do is get these kids involved. We give every high school student a free membership if they, if they want it. Um, we have kids that attend our meetings. Um, we have college students that attend. And then we took it one step further. And we took, uh, if we, if kids get involved with print competition, because, you know, I think everybody in here has obviously has competed at one point or another. So getting involved with print competition um, we give kids if they win a scholarship and not a, obviously a full ride, but we give them money towards their college. Um, so that is a very easy way. If you guys want to learn how to get involved in your organizations, your state organizations, provide a free high school membership. And that is the easiest way to, to get, you know, to, to start getting this youth involved in photography education. Um, yeah, so that's all I got. I thought I put an end slide in, but I guess I didn't. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Yeah, I, I was. Yeah, I'm a bit curious about uh, yeah, as you, you you bring these students into these, these programs. Are these students that have the have the inclination towards this creativity, and now they have an outlet for it, or can you measure if you? Can you measure the growth? And if so, how do you work? How do you find a baseline? So, okay. Yeah. So part of the pro part of the process is <clears throat> we give kids many choices in their ninth grade year. They have to take art as a, as a class. That's a required class. Oh, okay. So, but they have a choice between taking art, photography, there's a music intro to guitar, and then there's design class. So they have an op opportunity to take whatever class they want in that sense. What we, but what we end up doing is we don't tell them is that we end up doing, we end up having them rotate through um, a few of different ones throughout the, throughout the quarter. So every kid shows up, they have to do some sort of program, but they have a choice. And we've noticed that kids who just want to draw or have an outlet, they take the art class. Kids who want to do more hands-on um, woodworking that type of stuff, they take the design class. Um, mm -hmm. So, before we started doing this, we were tracking state uh, testing data, and we have seen a steady increase in reading and writing scores and math scores since we implemented this program. So it's hard to say, like, does the pro did the program <laughs> create that? But when it comes to well, the data, you know, I think it does support it. I and feel free to, Joanna, I don't know if you had a question, <laughs> but unmute yourself if you'd like to ask a question. You're, it, it looks like a wonderful program, uh, you know, and it should be in all high schools, not just one or two. Um, yeah, it's it's a great program. 
It, it seemed, it's very inspiring. I'm, I'm just sitting here with a big smile on my face while I'm watching you describe what y'all are doing. I think it's amazing. It's hard to like, I mean, I'm a, as a professional photographer as well, you like, it's hard to break away from some of that thought process. But, you know, one thing that I started thinking about was like, I do a lot of compositing, like, I went to Ben Shirk this past this past fall or this past winter to in and I learned a lot about how he composites, but it's also compositing is just based off the design process. So it's the same thought process of am I going to create a 2D picture or am I going to do a 3D model that can hold weights, right? Like a bridge design. So you know, it, I think it's all intertwined. Um you've got a very think, creative daughter. <laughs> I, I'm a, my wife is my wife and my other kid is gone. So. <laughs> I'm surprised she's not down here more. No problem. I had a question about how you came up with your topic. When we were talking before we, the program started, you said it took you a while to land on your topic. How did you get there? So um, we had some, basically what happened is I took over the directorship for the innovation center and I saw firsthand what these kids were doing and capable of doing and basically what are we seeing as a result of that and that's that's when the topic of mine just hit it's like you know i'm in this classroom i have over 100 kids a, a, a year i have a lot of data and i think i should do some research on this and i just went a little bit further um one thing that like today for instance i was we're, we're in our, the project that the kids chose uh for right now is we're doing a pinewood derby I don't know if you're familiar with the Boy Scouts Pinewood Derby where you get a block of wood and you have to carve um, that. Well, I have kids 3D modeling um, their cars. And if you if you want me to show you, I can I can log in and show you the cars that they're creating. Sure, I'd love to see. OK, let me just log into my. Um... So we are so I took the Pinewood Derby and I honestly I I. I, I get up a lot of times at three o'clock in the morning with ideas and I have a notepad <laughs> next to my bed and I write things down and I go back to bed. And this was a 3 a.m. idea I had is why not create a Pinewood Derby? Because all these kids have done this in Scouts, but have these kids 3D model it, 3D print it, and then using this the computerized machines, can they actually have it mill out? Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen here. Um, so this is a truck so we have a we have a lot of kids at school that love trucks so a lot of them they're they're just designing their own car um but we're having kids learn how to design their vehicle like this and then they can add spoilers they can do whatever they want for it and then um we race it down a track so i actually was able to get a track um donated from a local church and we created a whole school event out of this and we're basically and kids were getting like heated for it like it was hilarious um i have this kid right now that has not engaged at all in the past four years that he's been at school and i have he has created three trucks so far three different vehicles and he's doing it in time that kids aren't even able to finish their own one so i mean when you when you hit that that button or when you find that niche that these kids want any any type of design work you know it's pretty phenomenal to see so what we do with those models um so kids will go in i'll go i'll bring i'll bring this back up again uh kids will go in uh they this kid still needs to do his wheels so he hasn't done his wheels yet but we'll print this as a prototype we'll 3d print it with plastic we'll test it on the track get some weights of it see how we can modify it kids then go back re remodify it make it go faster and then once they're all done, we go down to the wood shop and we we mill out the machine or we mill out the cars. Um and with uh here, let me can you still see my can you see the PowerPoint slide now? I uh, just we see the truck. Okay, so let me just change my share here. So we use this machine here. In this machine, we have the kids put the block of wood on. They've already prototyped it. They've already tested it. Make sure it's all good to go. And then they just let this guy, they let this thing carve out the wood or carve it out. Um, this is a lot like this system here. So it's the same thing except for, um, you know, this, we use these for metal. What I would love to do is have the kids now do this in metal um, and such. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really cool project. Um, 
so we're just trying to figure out ways to have kids express themselves and that's really what this what my research is about is what happens if you if you allow kids to express themselves and what happens if you don't allow kids to express themselves uh, so I, I don't know if i tear if i answered your question of how i came up with the with the you topic did. you did but yeah. being immersed with this type of stuff all day um i think helped help, help me do that <laughs> um but it also made it fun and made it you know, it made it, it made it able to have me justify the fact that I'm spending $30,000 a year to the school board because <laughs> the school board got a copy of my, of my research. And I said, this is what happened. This is why you want to keep doing it. So, yeah. but it sounds like cool. a great topic and it wasn't just an academic or, or writing project because you are actually moving, you're moving through this with students and impacting their lives at the same time. I think that's, pretty exciting. The one student you mentioned that wasn't engaging at all that is now engaged is pretty exciting. It is like, and he's like, he's, he's always struggled, but it's like, I mean, he's, he's got the quite the potty mouth on him, that kid, but he's like, <laughs> what I appreciate about him is, is he's always honest with me and he's, and you can see that is is finally engaged him after four years. Uh, he's a senior after four years of just barely getting through classes, you know, he's, He's doing the best that I've ever seen him do. And it's pretty great. So he's actually going to go into engineering after this. So he's oh. he wasn't going to go to college and now he's going to go into engineering. So That's I think wonderful. Gotta clean up that mouth, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so. Did anybody else have any other questions they wanted to ask about the project or about the process at all? Or um... Out of curiosity, are you using in the photo class, are you using uh, digital or chemical? Well, so we do have a dark room. Um, it's it was in the art rooms closet, so I cleared it out a little bit and we had we found some old uh, uh, enlargers and stuff like that. So we're not there yet, but I'm trying to rebuild the dark room. Uh, I know I was going to start picking Wayne Tarr's brain because Wayne Tarr, who lives 20 minutes from me, who's also has a darkroom in his house. So we're trying to do the darkroom stuff. I'm a, I am was a chemistry teacher for 10 years, so I was going to, you know, look into that. I don't know what I have for ventilation in those rooms. So that's the only thing is when it comes to schools, we have to be really OSHA um, compliant when it comes to ventilating those chemicals. But um, as of right now, we're doing digital. So my goal is to expand the digital piece um, and then start doing composites with these kids too. Um, you know, I, I'm going to be teaching a photography class next year um, in such a compositing class. It's got approved by the school board. So I'm going to show kids how to do composites. We do, I, I love the sports composites. So we, right now I have a club that we photograph um all the senior athletes and the senior draw and the drama folks. And we, uh, I get these banners printed for Miller's. It's their, it's a 96, 36 by 96 banners, the inch banners. And we put those on a, we put those across the, the lobby in a school every year. So um, my goal is to have that more student centered and have those, have the ability for these kids to, to create that art and have it displayed. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that answered your question, Bruce, but which I love the chemical process, but there's some hurdles when it comes to um, have it safe for kids. Um, so as of right now, it's digital. <laughs> but what I'm what I'm going to do, what I'm trying to do, we're in the middle of construction for our for our new space. I'm going to have them seal and mount like a, I want to I want to have studio strobes, seal and mount a studio strobes in the ceiling with some with some papered backdrop rolls. So then kids can just bring bring down the stuff and and do it right there. The proper way um without having all these stands and stuff like that creating hazards but... right <clears throat> anyone did else answer a question? question yeah did that he i stepped on his his conversation was your question answered there bruce i think bruce was yes. question yep mm -hmm. anyone else well, I, uh, Jonathan, thank you so much for sharing. I um, found your topic so heartwarming, <laughs> which I don't know if that's normal. I don't know. Maybe it's not normal, but for this one, very heartwarming. And uh, thank you for sharing with us this evening. Thank you. Uh, the The whole process was fantastic. I mean, it. I, it's probably, you know, it's about two years worth of data that I collected 
but I mean, a paper, it took me about three months to write the paper. I think I wrote a, you know, a page here and there and came back to it. Um, you know, wrote some more, came back to it, that kind of stuff. So it was, it was, it was a great, great experience. Well, thank you once again for sharing. Okay, I'm looking for the announcements because I'm supposed, supposed to share announcements <laughs> again. And I couldn't remember where I stuck the paper. So let me give those out one more time. Well, that is not the right. Oh, here we go. Okay. Um, ASP Zoom on the 29th will be a noon Central Standard Time. It's Meet the Board. Uh, the uh, March 7th Zoom will be at Central uh, tw noon Central Standard Time. Joe Glida will be sharing his fellowship portfolio and paper. Um, the new and improved Images of Distinction is now open. Uh, you can, the details can be found on uh, ASFP.com. And also it's that time of year, the ASP Mentor Program is now open. You can apply to be a mentor or a mentee. Uh, go to the website, ASFP.com, log in and scroll to the bottom of the homepage to access the link to apply. And all of our Zooms are recorded and you can find all our links on our website, ASFP.com. <laughs> okay, guys, thanks for joining us. Thanks again, John, for sharing. I, I really was... Um, a very heartwarming and encouraging topic. Great. Thanks so much. Y'all have hey, a great John. evening. Yeah. Hey, John. Oh, yeah. yeah. John, hold, um, hold on. I'll talk to you after the, after the, I'll talk to you after when people uh, start signing sure. off. Sure. Okay. Sure. Did you want me to stop the recording? <laughs>